Hi, this is Madhusudan Raj. Saturday, June 30th, and I'm here with my weekend report where we will, you know, basically analyze the major events which took place uh, last week in India. To begin with, uh, on Monday, what happened is the former finance minister, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee, resigned, and he is now basically contesting for the seat of presidency of India. And many people are saying that he is basically uh, he has basically retired from the active politics in India and to that I'll say good readers. You know, we need more and more politicians to resign like uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee and instead of becoming president it would be better if they go and do some kind of productive work in the market economy. Okay, in any case, uh, what happened after that is important for us because uh, what happened is Prime Minister Manmohan Singh himself is now in charge of the finance ministry and uh, when he was basically returning from the G20 plus Rio, the Phony Climate Summit from Mexico, uh, he was basically addressing the uh, media, the mainstream media reporters, where he said that uh, we have to raise our economy through our own steps and he is saying India cannot expect outside help to tackle economic woes. You know. Now I understand that he is not, I don't know, I understand in this sense I don't know what kind of help he is expecting from outside but let us see what uh, inside help he is going to basically uh, do to the economy and make sure that when politicians are going to help the economy and the economy is going to get more and more worse. So what he's saying, what is what are the plans of uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh? He's saying we must plan our economy in such a manner that we cannot expect outside help on a scale which can see us through our difficulties. So you see the problem here is that he these words of his are very uh, dangerous and indicative of what kind of thing he's planning for his economy. Yeah, that word planning is itself very dangerous. He's saying we must plan our economy. Now we have to understand over here is we doesn't mean the people, you know, we are not allowed to plan our own life. We means the government. So basically government is going to plan the economy. That means the same central planning which you know put us into all these kind of troubles in the first place Manmohan Singh is basically uh, proposing those same central planning measures which as I'm saying to us since very long time it's not going to help anyone central planning is flawed systematically technically it is never going to work you know as Ludwig von Mises said you know around 100 years ago when he published his very famous essay on impossibility of socialist economic calculation. Planners can never calculate economically because you know they don't have the price system to work with like the market economy. Frederick Hayek also pointed out that it is impossible for the planners to plan properly because the kind of vast amount of knowledge which is required for planning is not available to them no matter how much amount of data they try to gather it is impossible for them to know and understand everything planning can only be done by individuals and not by some central planning authorities because you know there are 120 plus million you know people in, um, in India and uh, each and every individual has different subjective valuation which is absolutely impossible for the politician and the central planning bureaucrats and technocrats to understand. So this central planning is impossible time and again history has proved it. Russian central planning never worked. Chinese has to ultimately open up. Cuba is going in the same direction. Indians also had to take a U-turn in 1990s and you know give up the planning and basically adopt some kind of market mechanism. Actually it's not market mechanism. It's is interventionism, it's middle of the road policies which ultimately will lead us to socialism. Okay, so after that what happened is uh, uh, the finance ministry and basically planning commission on Tegalu Walia, he said that uh, pretty soon RBI is going to take some steps which is going to 
help revive the economy. So what kind of steps are BI and Nordic in Alu Alliance proposing? One thing is they, they have increased the external borrowing for the private corporations. Uh, the last limit was something like uh, US dollar 5 billion and now that limit is up to 10 billion US dollars. Now the problem here is that you know the recent crisis, the economy is in shambles, is in trouble right now because of excessive borrowing from the government and from the private sector and from the individual household. So, you know, it is simply absurd to expect that anything better is going to happen if those same corporations are going to be allowed to borrow more from outside India, external borrowing. Borrowing is the problem. Borrowing is never going to solve anybody's problem in the end. You know, what we need is basically to stop all this borrowing and basically start living inside our means, you know, use whatever savings is available and try to grow the economy by using those savings instead of just, you know, trying to print savings, which is simply impossible. Another thing which uh, uh, Montex in Aluwale was saying is RBI is likely to reduce the rates, interest rates, so that again is not going to help anyone. What's going to happen is basically it's inflation. You know, when RBI manipulates the market interest rate by bringing a lot of money out of thin air, creating a lot of money out of thin air, it just basically creates a lot of distortion into the economy, creates a lot of mad investment, creates inflation, creates boomer cycles. You know, it, it transfers wealth from the productive class of the economy to the non-productive class of the economy who receives that freshly printed money, you know, initially. So it is not going to help anyone. It is just going to you know, exorbitant our problems more and more in future. Then uh, RBI is also planning to raise the, uh, uh, they're going to offer more and more government securities, government bonds to the non-resident Indians, you know, and that again is not going to solve the problem. The problem is that government is spending a lot of money. Government is very big right now. The welfare state is very big right now, and it is intervening in, you know, all aspects of our lives, and that is what is creating all this problem. We don't need more government. What we need is no government. Actually. And if that is not, if that is not possible, then at least we need, you know, in the short run. Less and less government. Government has to roll itself back, not you know expand further. So we don't need government to spend more. What we need is government to spend less, and ultimately their spending must become zero. So if this NRIs are going to buy government bonds, what is going to happen is this uh, productive private wealth is going to go in the and uh, a wasteful profligate government coffers where politicians are going to just you know misuses for all kind of stupid purposes, you know, that much amount of private wealth is not going to be available for the private market, private economy, and that much amount of production income is not going to be generated in the future. So this is again uh, a step in the exactly wrong direction, it is not going to help anyone. After that, uh, what happened is, uh, RBI came out with its financial stability report and uh, RBI is saying that the risk to financial stability is on the rise. Of course it is on the rise and central bankers are responsible for this financial instability. What Robert Hicks calls the regime uncertainty is being created by all these central authorities, all these powerful people politicians, bureaucrats, central bankers, if they stop meddling into the market, you know, just introducing all kind of legislations and intervention into the market, then obviously this, you know, instability will reduce, uncertainty will reduce, but as long as they are very actively intervening into the market, instability is going to be there, you know, it has nothing to do with market economy, it is everything, it has to do everything with the government meddling into the market economy, the, the fascism which we are having here, mercantilist governments. Uh, RBI is also concerned over asset quality of banks. You know, they are saying concerns over asset quality of banks remain elevated. <laughs> so that's quite funny because all these banks are inherently bankrupt because they all are functioning on the fractional reserve standard where what they're doing is embezzling you know their depositors money so basically if you if you open a checking account a saving account with your bank and if you put 100 rupees in your account what they're doing is they'll only keep 10 rupees with them and they'll you know lend on 
remaining 90 rupees to some third party basically as, as loans and stuff like that which is now going to come back so what they're doing is they're creating money out of thin air so if at the same time all the depositors go to you know basically withdraw their money this banks can never give them their money back because they don't have it so forget about asset quality government all these banks don't have any assets to begin with they are basically heavily leveraged and they have given all the money to some other parties and all these banks are basically bankrupt they are only relying on you know people's confidence the moment the confidence is gone bank runs will start and all these banks will crumble like a house of God RBI, <laughs> the uh, RBI Deputy Governor Casey Chakraborty uh, on Thursday uh, said that told to bankers basically uh, that they should stop misleading the investors you know and, and that is again quite funny because RBI itself is misleading the investors by manipulating the market interest rate by creating money out of thin air right so entrepreneurs and investors are not getting correct signal from the market system and whether the real saving you know is available or not and and that is what is basically beginning all these booms they say RBI is creation of money out of thin air and lowering the market interest rate artificially is creating all these booms in real estate and auto and other industries and what is happening is because of that investors are misled and they create a lot of errors and when those errors are basically revealed you know you have a bust you have a recession so I mean, I should stop basically advising other people and they should look into their own house because the central authority, they are, they are the ones who are monopolizing the money supply forcefully in this country and everywhere else in the world. And they are mainly responsible for all this kind of disturbances in our economy. On the other side, the current account deficit is swelling day by day. And again, as I say, this is solely because of RBI's money printing, the way they are devaluating the rupee. What is happening is, import is, without exporting, people can import goods and services because they have extra money, extra rupees into their hands. So, uh, if people are buying gold and if people are importing more oil, then that is because of government's inflation. People are why people are buying gold because they are trying to protect themselves against governments running away inflation so again people are just reacting towards government's policy and they are not directly responsible for this deficit in the current account if they want if the government wants this deficit to go away then they will have to immediately stop printing money that's it stop printing currency you know I'm saying money but it is not money actually it's just fiat currencies you just stop printing rupees and current account deficit will be gone, you know, there will no, no problem into trade deficit. Okay, there is another problem which is brewing, I guess, and uh, that uh, so far one month has passed into this monsoon season and India has 69% uh, of India has, you know, deficit rains and uh, monsoon is uh, getting delayed day by day and what is, what is the problem is that India is a developing country, so-called developing country, but still most of the agriculture production relies on monsoon, right? So if one year is, uh, you know, slack and there is no monsoon, then we are all going to get in a lot of trouble because, you know, on one side the RBI is printing money like crazy and if on the other side the supply of goods and services, food production is also going to go down, then that's kind of going to create a lot of problems, you know that is going to raise the prices of all these agriculture products very much and it's gonna be you know very very tough for office to survive not only this the government is also very much planning looking at this poor monsoon to screw all life more so how they're doing that now today Jairam Ramesh uh, announced that they're going to uh, raise the funds in this MG Narega scheme, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. They're saying that because there, there will be poor monsoon, so they, they are going to give free money, basically free handouts to this agricultural labor. So what's going to happen is this is going to create inflation. Prices are going to rise. On one side you have no rains, no monsoon, so agricultural production is down, so supply 
is down and on the other side government is going to give, give those free handouts to all these laborers so that is going to create demand artificial demand for all this agricultural non-existing agricultural products now that means it is going to reduce the value of money that is inflation that is going to you know the chief effect of that inflation will be increasing the prices of all these agricultural products so you know monsoon is going to create you know, trouble for us the nature is creating trouble but the government is also going you know just you know doubling those trouble for us common people they are not going to make our life easy you know as usual because they are parasites not only that uh, government is you know as i said today is all governments are basically fascists so what they're doing is they're trying to have their bodies into the you know industrial sector uh, chief economic advisor Kausik Basu, he said that the government is trying to fix this trust problem. What he is saying basically is is that uh, we want to work uh, hand in hand with industry. There is an element of trust problem between industry and the government that has happened over the last several months. We were trying to correct it, and we will try to correct this as much as possible in the coming months. Mr. Karshik Basu needs to understand that this is pure fascism. You know, government and industry, big corporate houses are working hand in hand uh, to loot us. You know, corporations' job is to basically fulfill consumers' demands in the best possible way. The best possible way is to produce quality products at the lowest possible prices. So, all this, you know, industrial sector, this big giant corporate houses, instead of working for the benefit of consumers instead of working and I'm producing this you know quality products at the cheaper prices they're going and you know asking government for all kind of bailout packages you know so instead of owning their profit from the market economy by serving their consumers they are shaking hand with the government and by doing that they are just you know basically looting the taxpayers so we don't buy anything from from this industrial houses and you know, without buying anything, we have to pay them from our pocket in the form of taxes. So this is pure fascism, Mr. Kausik Basu. Nothing else. You know, government should stop helping. You know, businesses. They should. They should stop meddling with the market economy. All those business houses, if they are not viable enough, if they are not efficient, not productive, if they cannot serve their consumers, they, then they don't have any right to exist. And they must go bankrupt. They must go to dogs. They must shut down their businesses and hand over the keys to more efficient entrepreneurs and many other entrepreneurs out there who are very eager to serve their consumers. As I said, they are not going to uh, do anything like this. In fact, uh, the last news which I want to share with you today is that government has is going to announce a rescue packet for the power uh, companies, all these you know, state electricity boss which are definitely making a lot of losses. So what is going to happen is instead of allowing those you know electricity bolts to go bankrupt, go out of business, government is going to pour more money, more bailout packages for these people, taxpayers hard and money, and they're really going to waste a lot of money. What we need is we need to privatize all this sector. You know, privatize in the sense not government actively privatizing, but government just getting out of the market and then market will take over on its own. You know, whoever is better entrepreneur they will basically run all these businesses and inefficient entrepreneurs will in the market competition will not survive and they will be weeded out. But I, as I said, nothing nothing like that is going to happen. This whole cage in madness of printing money and bailing out all these companies is going to continue. RBI is going to continue to meddle with the market interest rate. They are going to create business cycles. They are going to loot us because RBI is basically a wealth transfer you know, institution, what they do is they transfer wealth from the productive class of the economy, that is the hard-working taxpayer, to the unproductive class, parasitic class of the economy, that is politicians and bureaucrats and other well-connected industry, you know, people who are connected with the government. So, the same thing is going to happen, you know, as long as we have the central bankers and as long as we have governments, nothing is going to change for better. All right, thank you very much for listening to me this weekend and I'll see you next week.